morning, 5K. So today we're gonna keep talking about pilgrims, those people who came over from England long ago. So here they came over on the Mayflower. You see the Native Americans are watching them as they come. They didn't understand um, what those big ships were. They thought they looked like clouds because they only had like birch bark canoes, right? The pilgrims got off at Pilgrim Rock and started making their homes there. They built their homes out of the trees that they cut down. But when winter came, it was a really rough winter because they were running out of food and sickness was killing lots and lots of people. Thankfully, though, the Native Americans came and helped the pilgrims so they, they could survive and learn how to plant new food. Like yesterday, we heard about how they learned to plant corn um, between... Sorry, my dears. Um, somebody had to tell me something over my telephone, so I had to pause you for a second. Um, so the pilgrims had a really hard time through the winter. So the Native Americans came, and they brought them food, and I was telling you about the fish, how they learned to put the dead fish in the ground when they planted the corn, because then the fish rotted and became food for the dirt. So when the corn grew, it grew big and strong and healthy because it had all those, they're called nutrients, the food and the dirt that was down in there. So here the Native Americans are coming to help the pilgrims. They gave them food. And the pilgrims were so thankful for the Native Americans that they decided to have something called the first Thanksgiving where everybody sat down to eat at the table and they celebrated and gave thanks to God for keeping them safe and providing them with their new really great friends and Native Americans who helped them and were willing to trade with them and teach them and help them live and survive. So I'm going to read to you today a book called The Littlest Pilgrim. Here she is. Let's read about The Littlest Pilgrim. The Littlest Pilgrim, written by Brandy Dogerty. So she's the author. She wrote the words, illustrated by Kirsten Richards. The illustrator is the person who draws the pictures. All right. The Littlest Pilgrim. Minnie was a pilgrim. She lived with her family in a small village. This is exactly what the village looked like that I, that I visited last year in Boston. There were many pilgrims in her village, but Minnie was the littlest one. Even though she was small, Minnie tried to help with the village chores. One day, Minnie decided to be extra helpful. Minnie found her big brother by the house. He was stacking wood for the winter and she wanted to help. Look, brother, Minnie said, I am helping to make a wood pile. But Minnie's brother was too busy to notice her. Like she's just putting little sticks. He's big enough that he can carry those big logs for a fire, but he's too busy to notice her. How would that make you feel if you were her? Kind of sad, right? Minnie went inside the house and found her big sister. She was mending a dress, so she's sewing the dress to fix it because it had a hole or a tear in it. I am ready to sew, said Minnie. Sorry, Minnie, said her sister. You are too little to help with mending. Go help, Mama. I am busy. How does it make you feel when people tell you that they're too busy for you? Yeah, it makes me feel sad, too. So Minnie went outside to help her mother. She was at the oven baking bread for dinner. Look, Mama, said Minnie, I am helping. But Minnie's mother was so busy making bread, she didn't even notice Minnie. See that puff of cloud? Of, it looks like smoke, but it's not. It's just the flour. When you put flour in bread, it gets kind of foofy, right? I don't know if that's a real word, but we're going to go with it. Minnie went to find her father. Surely he would want some help. He was getting ready to hunt for food in the forest. I'm sorry, Minnie. You are too little for hunting, Minnie's father said when he saw her. Why don't you go pick some berries for us to eat? 
Look at her sad face. She can't help anybody. Aww. As Minnie walked toward the berry bushes, she spotted her neighbor. He was fixing a door to his house. I can help, Minnie started to say. Sorry, Minnie, but this is a big job, and you are too little. She's handing him the nail. No, you can't help me with this, Minnie. Minnie wandered through the village. She was sad. Minnie just wanted to help. But everyone was too busy to notice, or they thought the jobs were too big and Minnie was too little. It wasn't fair. Have you ever felt like this littlest pilgrim? People said, no, you're not big enough to help. And it made you sad and upset. And you thought it wasn't fair? I know I have. Minnie walked towards the water. She spotted some boys from her village. They were fishing. Can I help you fish? Minnie asked one of the boys. He laughed. Sorry, Minnie. <laughs> You're too little for fishing. Oh, he laughed at her. It's not nice to laugh at somebody. Well, now Minnie was very sad. Why would no one let her help? Minnie knew there had to be something special she could do, even if she was little. Well, her dad told her something that she could do to help, right? What did dad tell her to do? Pick berries for them to eat. That's, that's being super helpful. Finding food for your family to eat. Minnie started to walk home and she saw some berries along the way. As she picked them, she heard something rustling in the leaves. Minnie moved closer to get a better look. And there at the edge of the forest stood a girl. Who do you think that is? Yeah, Native American. And she was little, just like Minnie. Hello, said Minnie. What's your name? Hmm. Do you think this little girl is going to understand her? Yeah, a lot of the, the Native Americans did not speak English. So if you tried to ask them a question or talk to them, they didn't know what you were saying. Just like if I went over to Japan, I would have no idea what um, the Japanese people were saying because I don't speak Japanese. So this little, little Native American girl might be a little confused at what she's saying. The girl just stood still and looked at Minnie. She didn't say a word. Hmm. Minnie remembered the berry she, had, she held in her hand. Do you want one? She asked. She looks confused, right? She doesn't know what Minnie's saying. She said, what's your name? She didn't say anything. She doesn't know what she's saying. Now Minnie's going, here, do you want some? If I had some cookies here in my hand, and even if I said nothing to you, but I went like this, what would you know that I was trying to tell you? Yeah, you can take one. You can have some. So look, she's smiling because she understands. Oh, you're going to share with me. You're giving me some. Hmm. People understand body language, right? What your body does, what you do with your hands and your face. At first, the little girl just stared at Minnie, but soon she began to smile very big. Minnie was too little for many things, but she was not too little to make a friend. The end. Think of all the fun things that these two can teach each other. So cool. All right, my loves, let's fold our hands to say the last half of the Lord's Prayer. So give God your best because he gave you his best when he sent his son to save all of us. So my turn first it starts with forgive us our sins. Forgive us our sins. Forgive us our sins. As we forgive those, as we forgive those who sin against us, who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, for the kingdom, the power, the power, and the glory are yours, and the glory are yours, now and forever, now and forever. Amen. Amen. 
Sleep tight. Have a great rest of your day. I love you.